Before we begin, a big thanks to Inspect All Pest Services, one of our many sponsors. Also sponsor of Podcast and Force 3. Get those tickets now. DistinctGrace.com. Providing the highest quality termite pest and wildlife control. That's not all they do. Insulation, pressure washing, gutter maintenance, and other home services in the metro Atlanta and surrounding areas. And I know you'll see Nick at Podcast and Force 3, October 12th at Tannery Row, Buford, Georgia. Again, DistinctGrace.com for tickets. But if you need... Inspect All Pest Services, inspectallservices.com. The Mad Dog, Manny Aurora, who will be joining us here shortly. Got some of your legal questions to get answered. Based out of Georgia, but litigates all over the United States. Criminal defense, white collar crime, DUI, Brandon's friend, drug offenses, and more. I'm sure that'll be a question for Manny. The Aurora Law Firm.com. Dr. David Markwell in Ridgeline Counseling. He's got 10 therapists in-house in Georgia. If you want to go in in person, need help, get help. One location across from Sprayberry High School in Sandy Plains in East Cobb, Marietta near the square in McKaysville, outside of Blue Ridge. But the good doctor can do virtual sessions like he does with me and my wife. MarkwellTherapy.com or shoot him an email, RidgelineCounseling at gmail.com. And FPC Insurance, servicing Alabama, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Indiana, Kentucky, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Texas, Utah, and Virginia. Perfect for new homeowners. We switched all of our insurance, like car, homeowners, etc., cetera, uh, over to FBC Insurance. My wife had USAA. It beats their prices. So if you're even looking to reshop your current insurance policies, FBCinsuranceservices.com. You get a quote online, or you can reach out 888-308-1841 or email info at FBCinsuranceservices.com. Home, flood, auto, motorcycle, boat, recreational vehicle, or personal policy. You name it, they do it. All right. If you want to sponsor the show or even the newsletter, I got that the other day. Reach out to me via the baileyshow.com and we'll get you all handled. All right, let's begin. What do we want to talk about? To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Welcome to the Bailey Show podcast. A guy show women love to listen to. Intellectually immature nonsense. That's BS. That's BS. That's BS. That's BS. <laughs> okay, man, let's do it. All right, there it is, episode 218 of the BS, your free bay episode. Thanks for being here. My name's Jason Bailey right there. That is the B-Man, Brandon Thrasher. Hello, Brandon. What up? I see Chuck took a class in studio lighting. <laughs> Not realizing that the light's supposed to be in front of the camera. <laughs> you guys, I'm on the road, man. You act like I can choose where I do this, all right? I take what's available to me. Uh, there's the Iron Fist at one, Chuck Lunsford. And yes, you can choose where you put the camera. You could have turned your whole studio. I mean... It's not that big of a deal. Like, literally, you could have been facing the winner. But I know, Brandon, in his mind, he's going, man, I'm going to get some good light for this shit right now. <laughs> We're going to white out the whole background. Hey, man, I'm coming to you guys from Pennsylvania. It's a lot different uh, sun here. It's brighter. Well, he's one of those guys. Coming to you live. Coming to you live. <laughs> Pennsylvania. It's the iron-fisted one. Jesus, put a bullet in my head. Uh, Is that a key in the door that looks like it's from 1800s? Dude, you guys have no idea what I'm in. All right, this is this is an interesting, interesting house, but I'm recording, and I think I have good internet. I don't know, but I forgot to check that. That was the one thing I didn't check. So if I fall off, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a skeleton key, Brandon. That's what they're called, right? Skeleton key? Yeah, and it doesn't look very intricate. Can you see that? No. Yeah. Oh, I'll get it. See, that's why I got that there, so you guys can see with the backlit. Uh, I see why there were so many crimes back then. Only yeah, it's like a, it's like a square. <laughs> no one will ever figure out that it's a square. No one can get in. We're going to do our locks in circles. <laughs> <laughs> Those dumbasses that made the square keys will never get it. <laughs> yeah. The really they probably, key. I, I never thought of that. That's true. This is really, really bad. I'll take a picture of this for you guys. It's just a square. Hmm. Well, you act like we can't see it now. <laughs> you can't see it because of the blinding light behind him. <laughs> you can't see that. So, so your, your, your plan was to drive to Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah. Your flight to go to Europe. Yeah. And why are you in Pennsylvania right now? 
so we came up here to uh, go to Gettysburg because you know we're, we're not we got we're here till tomorrow, uh, but we we were very close. I mean, it's only an hour. So when we came up here to Gettysburg, I was looking around and I'm like, dude, we were just talking about the ghost tours and all that stuff, and they were showing me these houses that still have the cannonballs in them, and then they said, hey, this house was a Civil War hospital where like you know a lot of soldiers died here. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, dude. I'm like, hey, so I talk to the owner. I said, do you mind if we record a podcast? I got all my stuff in the car. And uh, he's like, what do you need? And I was like, power and Wi-Fi. He's like, yeah, I got both. Well, don't so, forget, you need an extremely blinding bright light behind you. Okay. <laughs> there's, all the there's, souls trying to come get them. <laughs> it's set up, man. Uh, you know what? The next, I'll, I'll do some, I'll take some pictures for you guys. But it's, it's, it's cool in here. I, you know, it's hot. But it's nice. Why do you keep telling us that you're gonna take pictures? We can see the room. <laughs> no, like of like, dude, some of the, like the places I can't get into. If I went into some of these places, like completely dark, you wouldn't even see me because I was gonna set up there, and I'm like, oh, they won't even see me, and I'll get bitched at for that. Now I'm getting bitched at because I had a light behind me. You guys are freaking high maintenance, dude. You look like you're dead. Like that's the light. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I am. You know, I mean, I'm in a, I'm in All a right. haunted house apparently. So you, you and your family, and we're talking about you, your wife, and your three children, the small children, stopped off just so you could go to this haunted house? No, it's a bunch of them. But, I mean, they, they're doing, like, Gettysburg tours and all that stuff. And uh, this is one of the things we did, whereas there's a bunch of different houses here. And her family lives close to here, so they're all together. They're doing that. Well, they went to a crab place, got oh. a million crab doing that. And I'm like, I'm going to go record you guys kill the crab. So they're they're still eating crab and doing that. And I'm, I'm going to be up there. Guys. I'm going to be up in Maryland in a couple of weeks. I cannot wait to have <sighs> Maryland blue crabs at the Inner Harbor or wherever we decide to go. But here's a little thing. Uh, if you're not familiar with Maryland and blue crabs and the cult that it is, you know, I was born there, so I am. But Maryland cream of crab soup is like you can't get it anywhere else as good as you get it in the state of Maryland. And because they put sherry on top, they just do a little drizzle of sherry. But anywhere you go outside of Maryland, now, if you go to Delaware, Delaware has a very similar blue crab tradition, but it's a Delaware style. So, like, their Old Bay is not Old Bay. It tastes very similar, but it actually has less salt. There is a difference of crab style from Maryland to Delaware, even though they both share the blue crabs. It's very, very interesting. I didn't, I did not know that until a couple years ago when I met a Delaware chef. And he was making crab cakes, and he gave me the whole rundown. I'm like, I'm just familiar with Maryland crab cakes. I have no idea about Delaware. So here's the thing. Um, while you're in that neck of the woods, are you hist up to date on your history with the Civil War and what those states, their role they played in the Civil War during that time? It depends on how deep you're going here. I did find out today that Hanover, Pennsylvania, which is where Utz potato chips, it's a snack capital of the world, right? Snyder's, Utz uh martins they're all made here but they say that what i heard today was the battle of hanover which took place right before gettysburg and if that did not happen then the north would not have won gettysburg because this battle of hanover was the warning of the confederates that the north was coming and blah 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 so hanover pennsylvania not only the capital of snacks they take credit for the victory at gettysburg pennsylvania maryland were they part of the South or were they part of the North during the Civil War? They were part of the, why would I not know that? I'm going to say North. They were part of the North. I, I don't know the answer to that, to be honest with you, but I always thought they, I, th <laughs> I thought you're going to be a dick. Like, oh, stupid. No. <laughs> but, here, I don't know either. <laughs> but here, here's the interesting thing about this. And the only reason I bring it up and normally I wouldn't bring up something. Well, that's not true. I bring up shit all the time. I don't know the answer. But so when we were in Alabama, and of course, everything Civil War related in Alabama or just in the South, Georgia, you know, just everything Civil War. And we were going through that house that I told you about with the family and the guy committed suicide and the guy that invented the gimmick with the thing that then eventually became the atomic bomb, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, he's going through all the stuff of the Civil War. And I was telling him about the house that I grew up in, in Maryland. And now as a kid, and I lived there from the ages of five to 11, I was told that it was built during the Civil War. It had like steel in the walls and all these things. So I just always believed it. Yeah. When I said that to this guy, he goes, I don't think Maryland was uh, involved in the Civil War. And I was like, no, 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 no. That's not. But then he made me second guess everything because I wasn't sure. But I was just told these things as a kid. 
and I forgot to go look it up. And well, I mean, all the you know, all this, all the all the towns around here. I mean, Gettysburg, everything. All these houses are you know hundreds of years old. They were all here pre Civil War. That's what I'm like. You know, you walk down the streets and they're showing you all the bullet holes that are still in these homes uh, from the Civil War. So I mean, Maryland's what. 30 minutes away. So I don't believe that. I mean, even if it wasn't Maryland taking part in it, your house could have been built. Well, they, in the Civil they, war. they were there during the revolutionary war. Like a lot of those things, correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, Philadelphia, all that. I mean, and yeah. it's such a short skip and a hop, man. I mean, you're right there in the middle of all of it. This is all. So, somebody, somebody asked me the other day uh, about the word starting to get out that I'm back in Orlando, like just because we know, and a lot of people know I'm back in Orlando doesn't mean everybody knows. So for some reason, just in this past week, uh, there has been an interest in me being back in Orlando from some radio people. And uh, one person reaches out to me from, from one of the local companies and asks me if I could do conservative talk radio, which would be kind of funny, right? Because I'm, I'm not a conservative, but I'm not a liberal you know, and, and if you do conservative talk radio, you have to be, I think you do, at least you have to be as far right as po- I don't know. I don't know. I've never done it. I don't even think I'd want to do it, but it would be funny if I'm going on and, and I'm having this conversation People, because you have to be kind of smart to do that stuff. Like you got to <laughs> names, you got to do dates. I mean, you got to be able to back your play with some kind of fact because all as they are is like sports nerds in the political world. That's all sports or uh, conservative talk radio hosts are. So I'd be sitting there talking to whoever's on the show with me, like Chuck and you guys. Like, hey, guys, was Maryland part of the South or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, uh, Alexander Grand Bell, he rode in on the second horse behind Ben Franklin with Paul Revere when they gave the warning. That you have no idea. You're just making crap up, and people are like, oh, no shit. The house was built by General Custer. Cool. <laughs> Probably not the best episode to put on any resume. That I, would have seen. <laughs> I do know that Paul Revere was not the only guy that was running around them. There were other people. I don't Is he like Lance Armstrong, the first Lance Armstrong? <laughs> not Lance Armstrong. Actually, Lance Armstrong did not land on the moon. Was he like one of the second guys or third guys? Actually, Lance Armstrong passed up Paul Revere and just didn't <laughs> stop. <laughs> he ended up in California. The first shot that was ever fired was his, his testicle when it fell off. <laughs> That's a true story, yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, well, that's cool. Is it is it haunted? Have you stayed the night there yet, or is tonight the? No, first I'm staying. I'm staying. I'm staying here until uh, the plan is I'm going to be here till eleven o'clock tonight. So I'm going to be here for a few hours, many hours, and I'm going to take in what I take in. I'm going to videotape some stuff for you guys. See what I got. Are they still doing tours? Like you just gonna be like, hey, here's some random guy. No, they don't. They don't let people up here. Like all these, all these rooms, and all, they're all like storage, dude. So like a lot of storage stuff. There's there's old beds in them and stuff. I don't know. Um, but no, no, they're not doing tours. The owner was just like, yeah, dude, go ahead and feel free to use it. So I'm using it. You rented a room. No, I didn't rent it. No, no, no. This is the owner said I could use it. They're chilling in there. Oh yeah. None of these rooms are like being occupied. So you, you. you went up to a random house and asked the guy if you could. No, it was one of the guys that do the tours. He, uh, they, they have like all these houses that are uh, national. I don't know if they're landmarks, dude. I'm. I feel so bad. I should know all this information. I should have like a brief sheet yes. right now in front of me, yes. but I don't. I just know that it Getty's. It's close to that. It's oh my god! I sent it to you, the chick, the famous ghost. The fuck, do I look like your receptionist? You don't even. <laughs> you don't even <laughs> read my text. I told you. I said, "Get on, be recording at this house next to the." I don't want to say Fannie Mae because I know that's not it. It's 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 Fannie a Mae's famous buying houses. I know. <laughs> This is, I don't remember the name of it. I'll, I'll, I'll send the information. When everyone was drafted, when Uncle Ben came and said, we need you. And so Fannie Mae made sure all the soldiers got houses at a really good rate at the time. Yeah, this house was actually housed by Aunt Jemima, I believe, um, during the Civil War. Oh, I love her syrup. Oh, my God. She, this is where she made it. A very sticky situation in history. If, if you go back and you read it, yeah. Very, very <laughs> sticky situation. Um, no. Then you're leaving at 11. Where are you going at 11? I'm going back to Baltimore. Oh. Yeah, we're flying out tomorrow. So. You're going back to Baltimore. So you were yeah. in Baltimore and you drove over here today to record in a very bright room? Yeah, I mean, well, we're going to be in Gettysburg. Man, my wife's got family here, dude. She's got family like all around this area. She's from, she's like half Amish or something. I don't know. Wait, so where where's the family you came with? Uh, They're here eating crabs right now. They're down the road. The, okay. 
<laughs> yeah, dude, I can't. What do you What do you want me to stay with them? Then I mean, a, a, uh, Jason will send me to HR, and I'll freaking get a demerit or something. No, I'm just I confused can't. if you left them in Baltimore or if you. Like, no, no, they're, they're up here. They're in PA with me, dude. We're all together. Come on, it's a dude. family vacation. It's PA. Come on, keep up, dude. Keep yeah. up. I, I'm confused. I, I, you're in a room. You're leaving at eleven o'clock at night to drive to Baltimore, and your flight leaves tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon, but it's an hour. F- Why don't you just stay the night and wake up rested? Uh, we got stuff to do tomorrow in Baltimore. I'm checking out this Orioles Yankees fiasco. So you're going to go to a baseball game before you catch a flight? Yeah, the game's at 11 a.m. So I'm gonna be. I got plenty of time, dude. I'm trying to take it all in, soak it in, live life, dude. Low, low. Is it low, go? And you're and you're. Don't even try. And your flight leaves at what time? <laughs> uh, four thirty. Ooh. That's all. You'll get done to the game at 2.30, aren't you? Nah, games go quick. It starts at 11. It'll be done by 1.30. Head to the airport. We're all backpacking it. It'll be it's easy peasy. Baseball game. All right, Brandon, you want to uh, put some money down if he misses? I think he misses his flight. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. You're stupid. How far is the airport from the stadium? Like Are you leaving straight minutes. from the stadium to go to the airport? Yeah, man. We're getting dropped oh, yeah. off. We got the in-laws driving my van with all of us in it. They're going to kick us out the door with our backpacks, and they're heading home. You have a van? Got a... Yeah, of course I got a van. I got three kids. Like a minivan? Yeah, dude. Chrysler Pacifica. Yours? Oh, shit. You rent it. It's mine. What do you mean? I drove from Atlanta. Wow. I'm... What you... do you think? I'm going to come here without a car? So you got rid of the truck to get a Chrysler Pacifica? I got my own truck. I didn't. It... My wife's got to have a car. So she's got the Chrysler Pacifica. Yeah, dude. She's rolling dirty. Wow, you're the worst husband in the world. You get to keep the truck and you give your wife the Chrysler Pacifica? <laughs> what do you want? Yeah, get her like a get her like a Yukon Denali or something to hold on. No, we tried that. She went to the, the car lot and she test drove the Explorer. Um, she did test drive a Yukon. But see, the problem is those SUVs, dude. Once you've been in a van and you got push button side doors, the back hatch opens up. You can't get out of it. Like at this point, we made the decision. Like when the kids are out of the house, we're keeping the minivan. They're they're amazing. They're the greatest thing on earth. Whoever invented them, he needs a medal. Like I've never heard someone speak so highly of minivans. I'm guessing the Iron Fist at one, Chuck Lunsford's Chrysler Pacifica has a specialized license plate that's like <laughs> ride or, or d- fire dad. Or Dude, you guys are missing out. If you I'm telling you, Brandon, get a minivan. It'll change your life. He can Dude, get we, we rode around. We rode a minivan for a while when August's truck broke down. He had a Toyota Privia. We packed that bitch out like 15 people. The thing yeah, was. yeah. So Brandon, you now Brandon gets a minivan and drives. It's cool. Chuck drives. It's it's the opposite. It's weird. They're made for people like Chuck, but it's embarrassing. They're not made for people <laughs> like Brandon. So Brandon can pull off the minivan. I had a buddy in high school who had a badass minivan. I mean, I would argue that it looked close to the A-team van. You know, it was, like, kind of jacked in the back. It was white, though. It had floorboards, and, I mean, it was cool. Like, when we stayed out all night, we could sleep in it. It was badass. But he wasn't toting around kids. He wasn't that. He wasn't a dad. So it was cool. Chuck's driving down the interstate. You know, got his, you know, his, his baseball Oakleys on and totally <laughs> dadding it up and, you know, blaring yacht rock or whatever. Just Saint Grace's latest Warren. You know, he's just probably he's played Warren for the past fourteen hours in this road trip. <laughs> Somebody comes up next to him. He honks back at him. He's like, "Check out my specialized plate." Says Fire Dad. <laughs> <laughs> what? Make fun all you want. I'm owning it. And and you know what? When my kids turn sixteen, I might give it to my son. And he's going to be in heaven because you know, when he, dude, you know, imagine how much you're going to get laid in that thing. Like yeah. if you were in high school and you had one, I mean, I had a probe, I had a Ford probe. I bet you it was did. impossible. Yeah. Oh, shut up. You, what'd you drive? You told me what you drove. It was something gayer than a probe. Oh my God. Bite your tongue. I had the coolest car that you could possibly have as a 16 year old. I had an 88 Honda Prelude cherry red with gold honeycomb rims <laughs> turn on a dime. You tell me your probe turning on a dime. You talk about your Chrysler Pacifica turning on a dime. It couldn't stick shift with the lights that went like Miami Vice. Bite That's what my probe had. My probe had that. No, I know. I know the probe. Oh. It was the stupidest car ever built. No, it wasn't. It was not a stupid car. Manny, what was your car when you were 16? Manny Aurora, the Aurora Law Firm, joining the program. What was your car at 16? 
uh, we couldn't afford a car. So I had a Honda 250 scooter slash motorcycle. It looked like a Vespa back then. Sweet. Were you part of a, a, a like a scooter club? No, a motor <laughs> club, like a scooter. I was the only one. I got heckled a lot for having a, it's a Honda 250. It's way back when, if you go to 86, 85 time frame, it looked like a Vespa. Hmm. It does now. It wasn't as cool. Yeah, you weren't part of the Hells Angels groups because they had motorcycles. You were part of the Heck Angels group. Was... Yeah, I didn't have a leather jacket with any patches for my scooter. Plus, it was faux leather. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's a sweet ride. Chuck's trying to um, argue the point of driving a Chrysler Pacifica is cool. Can we tell him that it's not? If it has the wood paneling on the side, which I've seen, I could maybe I side with Chuck, but otherwise I'm going to have to put a hard no on it. <laughs> the beaver wood. That's what it's called, beaver wood. Does it have the beaver wood? No. Ah, it's even got a panoramic sunroof, though. Manny, come on, man. I'm a dad. Mm. I got three kids, dude. You He's come on. I thought for kids. you, Manny's got my back. Come on, dude. Right. He didn't give me context. If you got kids, and that's much better than an SUV because it's a lot more space. Plus, it has those hidden things on the floor. It's actually a nice car if you think about it. Yeah, but you missed the part where he said it has nothing to do with kids. He just wanted it because it was his dream car at <laughs> five. Well, dream car is a bit harsh. Maybe to pick up moms at the uh, Little League games or something, but other than that. Yeah, he says every time he cheats on his wife, who he hates, by the way, he <laughs> yeah. does it in the Chrysler Pacifica. Dude, it's a lot dude. easier to kidnap him. He just hey, puts a bunch of fentanyl on him and pulls him in. Bunch of fentanyl on him. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Did I get that story right, Chuck, or am I off? No, man. I'm not, man. You, you don't believe anything they say at all. No, the fentanyl would end up killing your victim. You don't want to do yeah. that. Yeah, it's called chloroform. That's why. That's yeah. why they haven't found any of the women that he's kidnapped because he, <laughs> he fucks it up every time and kills them instead of kidnaps them. Does the Pacific have any windows? <laughs> They're all tinted out <laughs> with aluminum foil. <laughs> 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 all right uh manny aurora how are you buddy uh how is everything at the aurora law firm uh any big cases going on right now uh, i think we don't have anything just now we're starting a big one august 19th i told you about that triple homicide yeah we talked about it one time earlier it was supposed to start on the 8th of july but the government couldn't find its witnesses so the judge of course Always does whatever the government wants. And so they pushed it back another 40 days. So now our guy sits and waits for another month. Is that normal? If you're not prepared by the date that has been given, they'll give you leniency? Or is that just for the prosecution? It's just for the prosecution. If I would have had that, because they set the date in January of this year. And so we've been talking about it, had status conferences. And, you know, they just didn't do their homework. And, um, uh, you know, now we get screwed for it. And if I would have come in there and said, oh, I'm busy or I've got this, they would have just said too bad, get somebody else to do it. Um, because his first trial, the lawyer had to change. His public defender had all of three days to prepare for a triple homicide. He got assigned the case on Friday. So you can see how that's going to go. Mm -hmm. That's. Do you have any relationship with prosecutors during the trial? Like you, you see him at the coffee shop, you sit down at the same table. And if so, do you talk about the case or do you lie to each other? Is it all part of one big strategy? Is it a game? You see that in the movies, well, you know, like a few good men, Kevin Bacon and Tom Cruise, two different sides. And, you know, they go and they meet at the bar and they talk a little bit about the case and then he leaves and he's pissed off. Does that happen in real life? Um, it used to, when I was younger in the nineties, we were a little bit more cordial as far as that goes. Uh, but now it's just like the ability to lie is just so prevalent. It's anything to win. And it's made it less fun to practice. I mean, I've been a prosecutor, I've been all that. And I, you know, thought we had a great relationship, but now most prosecutors, it's us against them. And there's just true believers on all sides. And it's, it's not nearly as much fun. Everything's antagonistic. If you want something, they have to oppose it. Um, nobody actually just talks about the law and says, you know, this is what I think, this is what should happen. It's always, screw you. Like, for example, this triple homicide, uh, I told you uh, last time, if your guests had listened or were listening, um, another guy confessed to one of the murders. And so when that happens, that's called exculpatory material. They're supposed to turn it over. And in this case, they did turn it over to that lawyer who didn't have enough time to look at it. And so his name was buried way in there and the guy never got a chance to talk to him. And the state didn't present that witness. 
And of course, the guy gets convicted. And so the question is, yes, they sort of turned it over, but shouldn't we all just have a higher calling to get the right thing done? And if there's bad evidence, be upfront about it and present it. Um, and that just doesn't happen anymore. And, and that's why you see so much stuff on TV, so many shenanigans. I mean, look at what just happened to Alec Baldwin. Yeah. I mean, the government, you know, bullshitted their way with the judge again, and she just wasn't having it, which is incredibly rare. Most every judge doesn't want to put their name on something that dismisses charges in a high profile case. Um, and that was shocking to me that, you know, she actually followed the rules and did what we think is right, regardless of what the uh, person did it or not. The rules are more important. Yeah, so I don't know all the ins and outs of the Alec Baldwin thing. I know that they just dismissed it, right? They said, you're you're free to go. The case is done. And what was the reasoning behind that? Um, they said the government hadn't turned over the evidence, and they'd been playing games and actually lied to the court about the status of something. Um, and you just can't do that. For example, some of the bullets they didn't feel were relevant, so they just didn't disclose it to the other side, you know, so they could test it or do whatever. And the judge says, this has been a pattern with you guys. In our case with the triple murder, I've sent four letters asking for evidence on the case and witness lists. And, you know, we're seven months into this thing that the trial should have happened and I still don't have it. And nobody seems to care because, quote, he's a gang member. And so he deserves it. Wow. So the Alec Baldwin thing, you agree with them dismissing it? Yeah, I'm pleasantly shocked because discovery violations, there's got to be a consequence. If not, then why can't I just keep doing that over and over again? And in Atlanta, where I practice, for the most part, the DAs can get away with murder. I mean, hell, in the YSL case with the rappers, you've got the judge meeting with witnesses and essentially threatening them to testify for the government. Otherwise, he could jail them. I'm sure there's a lot of nuance, but if you guys go online and you can actually see that transcript, it's insane, um, you know, that a judge is talking to witnesses to try to get them to testify. Wow. Is that, that That's what it's come to. Is that legal? Well, it's not, and all that's getting ferreted out now. There's another judge assigned to see what's going to happen. Is there going to be a mistrial? There's going to be all those kinds of things. But in just in what world, you don't need to be a lawyer to say, hey, maybe the judge shouldn't be talking to the witnesses for one side versus the other. That's crazy. I've never heard that before. Judge sitting down, that'd be kind of intimidating. I got to yeah, I want you, everybody to Google that thing on YSL and just talk about the judge, you know, privately meeting with a witness without telling the defense lawyers. Yeah. Can, can judges be sued like for stuff like this? No, you can't be sued because um, the government always has immunity on a lot of these types of things. You have to show that it's a crime. It's not a crime. It's an ethics violation, arguably. But I'm, I'm sure there's more to it. But that transcript's out there. And if you read it, you'll just be stunned at the shenanigans that go on. Um, and we just sort of all turn a blind eye because we somebody's decided these are horrible people. And whether they're horrible or not, the rules are more important because they protect all of us not just whether you have a tattoo on your face or not. Why, Brandon? You want to sue a judge? Yeah, dude. I want to sue the Cowdy County Justice Department. For what? Oh, they're fucking dumbass bitches in the fucking jail. They don't know fucking shit. They're lazy assholes. Don't give a damn. They couldn't even fucking get my order right at McDonald's, let alone fucking manage people in a jail. Now, the judge was cool. I like the judge. Everyone else, piece of shit. Now Brandon. that my shit's done, I can talk about it. Watch your mouth. We have a guest, a man of the court right now, and you're using all this profanity. That's just unprofessional. He probably, he probably seen people like that. He probably agrees there's some low-life scum out there. Maybe he wouldn't use those words, but I just used them for Manny. I'm, I'm doing I what he's I agree with Brandon a lot because if you're going to work at a jail, treat the people like human beings instead of just completely indifferent, and that's probably what you meant to say, aside from the F-bombs. It's yeah, just yeah. You have some compassion if somebody's in there. Versus, you know, just a piece of stone, so I don't care. I mean, until you've been there, you can be all right wing, pro police and all that stuff. It's all great. But until you get on the receiving end of what really happens versus, you know, having stickers in your car or little yard signs saying I support the police, you don't understand what goes on. That doesn't mean you shouldn't support these people and do this thing because the institution is correct. It's just the people don't give a shit. We don't pay them enough. And half of them are just there because they couldn't get any other job. You have no idea how easy it is to get this job. Is they that, had a QR code at the jail saying, please come work here. You want to make a difference yeah. in your future? Is, is that the misconception, Manny? Is, you know, people think it's too black and white, you know, like with a blue line down the middle, pun intended, of saying you're either pro-law enforcement or you're not, which would be like the defunding of law enforcement people, right? But there's more to the story. Because I always think that's the problem in general. People look at it too black and white. It's either you are or you aren't. But there's 
it, everything is a case by case basis. I mean, even people like I'm very much pro law enforcement. Am I pro the bad law enforcement? No, but I'm pro law enforcement. Then I'm automatically tagged this right wing conservative, blah, 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 blah. I just believe in law and order. I believe there's rules. That's all I believe in. You know, but what you're saying, tell me if I'm wrong here, is that just because you're a defense attorney doesn't mean you don't support law enforcement. It's just the institution around it, and even law enforcement would probably agree. Is that right? Yeah, I love law enforcement. I mean, it's the reason I have a job. We donate heavily, go to a lot of the fundraisers and the community outreach things. We, in fact, you know, do a lot of outreach, and we've offered to do training for the officers for free. Um, you know, based on the cases so they can actually do a better job when they're executing search warrants and things of that nature. But a lot of the people in there just it, it's it's almost like us against everybody else kind of mentality, right? We all want law enforcement. We all want to be safe. We all want all this. We need these people. But the behavior is what's gotten to me is like they just don't care. And as Brandon will tell you, if he went to the Coweta County Jail, they could give two shits. You're waiting to have somebody let out. You know, come back in three hours or four hours. It's no skin off my rear end. I mean, you're impacting people's lives. If you don't want to do the job, then don't do it. But don't be an ass about it because we're all human beings, right or wrong, whether we've done right or Just follow the rules. I want the rules followed. I'm super pro law enforcement. But just follow the rules. If they did that, I wouldn't have a job. And it would be great if I didn't need to have this job and I could go be a radio personality all the time. Is that money? You think that's all about money? I don't know if it's about money, but it's just what kind of people are you attracting to do these jobs um, when you're paying, you know, 35, 40, 50 thousand dollars at most in today's world. Uh, um, you can't live on it. And it's now you've got all the authority in the world. You don't have much going for you. So now you get to exercise it or just be indifferent about it. And that's so it just breaks my heart. So, it, it, you know, and this is for most jobs. And I was just having this conversation with someone at this party I was just at. They just got laid off from a job. They had a good job. They were loyal. Uh, they loved it. They did everything for the company. And now they're out looking for another gig. And this individual is extremely intelligent, really hard worker, knows his stuff. He's in marketing and advertising. And so we got into that conversation. And then uh, this person's father, who's now retired, an older gentleman, you know, he kind of got caught up in that towards the end of his run where he was almost forced to retire early because he didn't want to be a part of what today's world is, which is consolidation, lack of management, and money. You know, I think there's all these different problems, and I can speak firsthand from the radio industry, is that, you know, you, it, 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 the ego, when the ego gets involved, it's, it, it ruins everything. So it's very simple. You have the top, top guy. That top guy hires his guy to do all of his work. That guy goes and hires and fucks up over and over again because he lied somehow gets the job, has no idea what he's doing, right? He's never going to be held responsible because if he's held responsible, then the top, top guy's got egg on his face. You know, and I'll give you an example. Uh, a market I was just at, they've gone through two director of sales. I just found this out the other day. Two director of sales, two morning shows, one afternoon show, and a slew of salespeople. And then at some point in time, you have to go, okay, there's no way it could be all their fault. Like you can't have that many bad people, right? It has to like, who's, who's doing the hiring and who's doing the firing. It's got to come there, but those people are never held responsible. That's part of the problem. I would assume same in law enforcement or any other business is you have a guy that comes in, wants to put their thumbprint on something, wants to make a name. Look at me. I'm in control. I'm power tripping. And then he just fucks everything up. And then everybody has to suffer underneath. I know a lot of people in law enforcement in the Atlanta area, they've decided to leave APD and go to different departments and different, you know, whether it's the FBI or, or what have you, it's just, I got to get out of it because of they didn't like how that was run at that time, you know? So it comes from the top. That's why people are so pissed off. Badly. You know, private business is a little different than government. You know, as far as these officers and stuff, you're directly impacting people's safety, their lives, their freedom versus, you know, the, they're hiring bad people and screwing up the company's profits kind of thing. I mean, we have to look at it differently. I mean, government work is inherently a nonprofit slash losing proposition. You're not there to make anything. Your job is solely there to help people and do the right thing versus in the corporate world. You got to do what you got to do to make money. If that means firing everybody, so be it. 
So I agree with you, but there is a difference between the two. You don't run government like a business because you're not in it for the profit. Otherwise, you'd be cutting a lot of, you know, other stuff. You have to help poor people. You have to do these other things. It's just an inherent financial loss. It's what government is. I heard that Brandon Thrasher was blowing your phone up, Manny Aurora, because of him needing a favor. What was that all about? I don't know the whole story. I don't know any of the story, really. Well, I can't really talk about it. Uh, Melissa Brandon wants to bring it up because, you know, that's what we do. We try to respect people's privacy. But if Brandon wants to go ape and say, just talk about it, I'll let you know. Brandon? Uh, yep. Just got a friend with the DUI, and uh, we told her not to drive. And uh, I told her even if you, if you do get pulled over, don't blow and don't walk. And she did both of those. So I don't know uh, what, what they got to work with there. She's still in jail, too. Look, if you, if she, you got a girl that you know, she likes to blow good for her <laughs> well she should be out of jail that's part of brandon's issue right she's gotten bond but because they're running her criminal history and it's taking forever for whatever reason they won't even let her family post bail and so you got a first-time offender yes made a terrible mistake as far as that goes but now you're just sitting there in a cell scared out of your mind i mean what's the reason for that if you got bond posted you know Run your checks, get it done. I mean, they do the same checks basically at the side of the road when they look it up on a computer. I mean, it's not like we're sending out letters asking for people's background. It's all in the computer system or at least let the family post bond. So when you do finish up your background check, you can just release her immediately. Instead, she may be spending yet another night in jail. And I mean, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I would not want to do that. Well, the dickhead up there at the bonding office, we had to talk to him, the guy where you go in and be like, hey, you know, we need to bond someone out. We've dealt with this man three times. He just gets more dickish every time. And he said, we need to get her. I said, can we bond her out? He said, no, we need to get fingerprints to make sure we know who she is. But she, her fingerprints aren't in the system. So what are they going to compare it to to see if like, OK, these fingerprints match up? I don't understand that. The fingerprints aren't an issue. They don't know what's called a criminal history. So the officer at the bonding office is just being difficult. If you run somebody's criminal history and they don't have a record, then you're not going to have any fingerprints. That's um, what I'm if saying. Read about fingerprints. You just put it in the AFIS system. Every law enforcement has it. It takes the computer a few seconds to you know figure that stuff out. But this is what I mean. Nobody gives a shit. It's like, hey, let me figure this stuff out so we can get this person out of here. And instead, we have another guest on the county's nickel for another night for no reason. And God only hopes she doesn't get bed bugs or something while she's there. How, okay. Let's talk about this girl for a second. Okay. This is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting. I was waiting. Okay, I, have, this I, makes I, sense. I have a theory. You know, I mean, I do too. I do too. Just by hearing what I've heard, I have a theory. <laughs> South Georgia, right, Brandon? Girl? Not South Georgia. It's fucking Metro Atlanta. Or Metro Atlanta? Okay. Well, I'm just I'm trying to figure out where this happened at, where she got the DUI. How we County is what he said. Oh, yeah. It's about, it's about a mile and a half from where I got arrested. Okay, it has nothing to do with me trying to figure it out. I'm just trying to figure like location wise. That's all. How long have you known this girl? Uh, probably like 12 years. Okay. Long time friend. Good looking girl, right? Yeah. Used to be. Okay. Back in the day, you guys when used to hook up. Now you're just friends, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So that's, that's, that's how, that's what I figured. Okay. And you were out with her when she was doing her drinking. Yeah. We were all about five, six of us. Okay. Just hanging out, drinking the moonshine, taking dips, Telling stories of back in the day, having a good old time. She leaves by herself on her own in her car, own vehicle. Yeah, to go get her boyfriend. To go get her boyfriend. Because he was pissed because she was hanging out with five dudes probably. Like, what the Sam shit? No, he doesn't have a license because he's on probation too for something. So she had to pick him up. Winning combination of a relationship right there. <laughs> so you tell her, don't go. You've been drinking, right? You don't want to go see your boyfriend. You Because know, you don't like his boyfriend, her boyfriend. Ah, oh, he's he's all right. He's he's a little young and a little dumb. Yeah, stupid, right? He's not as mature as you are at twenty five. So he's some <laughs> dumb idiot, some young punk kid in Coweta County. Plus, there's still a little thing, and you've been drinking, and you're like thinking, eh, you know what? We're getting along tonight. Maybe I'm gonna touch a titty or something, right? Uh, no, I really wasn't thinking that, but you know, yeah. could've, could've came up. <laughs> Let me get a second opinion. Chuck, was he thinking that? I think he had touched a titty before she left. Okay, so she gets in the car. Man, he's loving this. She gets in the car because you were trying to talk her out of it, not that you cared about her well-being or anybody else on the road, but you wanted her to stay at the, the you know, love shack with Woodshed Ted in the backyard 
And uh, and she and you when she left, you're like, ah, screw it, just go. Yeah, well, ironically, it's Woodshed Ted's sister. See, even better, <laughs> right? <laughs> What's her name? Uh, Michelle. Michelle. All right. Uh, I don't know. Uh, wishing well, Michelle. I don't know what to call her. <laughs> DUI. No, but- What's that? Yeah. Yeah, well, she was supposed to just go straight home, and then, you know, she never would have passed the cop if she wasn't going to her boyfriend's house. But apparently she ran a red light, supposedly, and then was swerving, and then blew and walked and failed both of those. Okay. But you told her before you leave, you're going to get pulled over. I got a premonition. I just know how this works. You're going to get pulled over, and if you do, don't blow. But stay here and blow. I'd rather you. Yeah, yeah we all told her that. And then uh, her brother was yelling at her at the bar, and everyone heard it. And then I was like, well, if you do get pulled over, just – don't give them anything. Just okay. go to jail. All right. So she gets pulled over. And how much, how longer, how long after that did you get a hold of Manny Aurora? Uh, she sent me a text at 1040 saying getting a DUI. It was GSP too, which was crazy. He let her, he let her talk on the phone and everything and wait till her mom got there. So we ran up from the bar and then it was probably like, uh, I don't know. I texted, called Manny probably 11 o'clock, 1130, something like that. Manny, I apologize that Brandon's blowing you up at 11 o'clock at night. I'm really sorry about that. Most of our business doesn't happen between nine and five. So it's <laughs> nothing that I'm not used to. I'm just glad it wasn't 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. But see, then that's a nice police officer, right? A lot of them, they could have impounded the car, made her pay hundreds of dollars in impound fees. But when the ones that are cool will let your family come out there and take your car so you don't have that problem and use your phone because it's not like you're a horrible person. I mean, you just made a mistake and thankfully nobody was hurt. Mm-hmm. Now she's going to spend the weekend. Yeah. Well, here's, here's the hotel. Here's the kicker of me going through the story and guessing what happened is Brandon gets to play the hero amongst his friends where he says, don't worry about it. I'll I'll call my attorney right now. I got it under control. Brandon, did you do that? Yeah, I said, I got the best defense attorney in the nation, man. We got Manny Aurora on the line. (laughs) I knew it. I knew He didn't give me any credit. He didn't give the show any credit. He didn't give Chuck any credit. He just says, oh, man, I do this podcast with the best defense attorney in the world. Mad Dog, Manny Aurora. The Aurora Law Firm. I got it under control. We'll get old wishing well Michelle out of the the, the tank tonight. I got it. It's all me. I got it. Yeah, that was about word for word the first five words you said. (laughs) <laughs> do I know people or do I know people? At least Brandon, Chuck, that's pretty good. I did. I mean, you had my only question is Brandon, when it's all said and done, Manny is going to do Manny and he's going to help her out. He's, I mean, it sucks that she's got to spend the weekend in jail. When she gets out of jail, does she come back to the basement or does she go back to her young, stupid boyfriend's place? Because you're saving her here. I mean, you're kind of the one that's going to be the hero at the end of the day. So what's your play? And don't lie. Don't sit there and be like, oh, I just want to be a good guy. I'm just trying to be a friend. No, I mean, honestly. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I got, I got, I, I mean, the, the, I know this, it doesn't make sense because when we're going to air this episode. I know. I just saw it. Holy. I just had five people come in and, and they're all yelling at me right now. Holy shit. Okay. What? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're recording this episode way before we release it. So, but uh, I'm getting uh, by now, you know, this story's five, six days old. But uh, yeah. Donald Trump may have been shot and injured at a Pennsylvania rally in the ear. I saw that he didn't get shot because nobody else next to him would hurt. Something just got him on the ear. We don't know if it was a, you know, something serious or whatever, because had he been shot and it was a grazing wound it would have hit somebody in the back and there'd be a hole or something. And they wouldn't have just basically taken them out and left everything to the people. They would have locked that place down. Ears so bleeding. The news before I came on about that. His ears bleeding though. Yeah. I mean, we don't know how it happened, but it, if a bullet isn't going to just cause a little bit of an ear bleed. Um, and if it grazed you, it would have hit the 50 or so people behind him that were right behind him in line and it would have killed somebody. I- I just don't uh, like the the mentality. This is like we never learn from history is, you know, the, the people, leaders uh, have been assassinated f- for decades, centuries. Right. I mean, that's just what human beings do when they disagree with somebody and you're crazy to an extent. You try to take someone else, take someone's life. Like, that's how uncivilized like we're still such fucking cavemen it blows my mind like i don't agree with everything the guy says either but would i want him killed no i mean it's just crazy mentality that people have that you think that you have to kill 
somebody because of what you hear or see on the news or on the internet. What a fucking weird, just crazy, uncivilized world we live in. Just, it's so sickening and disgusting to see that. It just saddens me. Like, almost what makes me want to f- get a terminal disease and just leave as soon as possible. Oh, God. <laughs> it, it, it's just not, it's just like to see that and go, this is my fellow mankind. You know, and I go back to like, you know, we've, Manny and I have been friends for well over 10 years and we've done radio shows together. We've done this podcast together. He's always supported me. He's always supported the show. And, you know, and, and I'll get people that will kick back on Manny, you know, defense attorney. He's, you know, fighting the cops, fighting the city, fighting, the, you know, all that kind of thing. And they'll label Manny as this and this and this and that, you know, but when you hear Manny, like if you know Manny and you hear like just when he says, I support law enforcement, we give to law enforcement, we do all these but and you understand both sides and you're able to debate and talk about those things in an intelligent way like Manny does. And his colleagues probably do for the most part. That's how you should do things. Don't fucking shoot somebody. But that's all I know. I probably shouldn't even brought it up because by the time people hear it in this episode, they'll be like, damn, you guys record way in advance. Oh, yeah. Well, because <laughs> I'm moving. Like with a firecracker. Sorry. That's always the weird thing about podcasting in real time events. <laughs> it's like to bring them up or not to bring them up. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I just, that's my, that's the radio in me. You know, you see it, you stop everything and you talk about it. Well, anyway, I'm guessing, I'm guessing they're going to be talking about this for the next like three months. Right. So. Oh yeah. It's fair game. And this is pretty big news, man. Pretty soon big news. As soon as you find the person, this is probably the best thing. Thank God he's still okay. Right. But this is probably the best thing that could happen to that man in his campaign. You know, I mean, like you're going to find this guy that obviously doesn't like him. Then they're going to find ties to and this and this and that. And then all these different theories, whether they're true or not, will come about. And, you know, you'll go on from that. So anyway, I'm sorry. Back to Brandon and his uh, drunk blowing uh, girlfriend. Yeah. So, so what's the, what's the what's the end game is what, what where I was going with that. What is what is your end game, Brandon? And don't don't lie to us. You got nobody else is listening. Just us three. What's your end game? Uh, I mean, the end game was just to. uh get her out of jail and charge a good bit of interest on money. I like doing that. I'm not trying to bang her or anything. What do you mean? You were going to, you're, you're paying the bond. Well, I was, cause it's a fucking pain in the ass to go through a bail bondsman. They want to know who your uncle cousin, they want business license and they want proof of housing and shit like that. Like it's, it's a headache. What's, her bond bond's there. five grand, right? Five grand. 4,500. Yeah, I think. And you're going to charge gonna... her interest. Oh yeah. That's brilliant. How much are you charging her? <laughs> It was like 50%. Shut shut up. There's no way he's going to get that, though. You can't get that back. It's better. It's better uh, for her because then when you go to court, you get that money back. But if you go through a bail bondsman, you don't get that money back. Manny is like a bail bondsman. Right. So what happens is if you hire a bail bondsman um, on misdemeanors, they can charge you up to 12% of the total bond. So I'm guessing the bond might have been about five grand or so. So if you post it all yourself, you get every penny back minus like $20 in processing fees, whatever that is. Um, or if you use your own property, you get it all back again, minus some processing fees. So it's smart to do that. And so if she repays, Brandon will get all his money back once her case is closed. They'll just issue him a cashier's check once the case is over. Uh, since he's the one that paid it, I guess that's what you did, right? Oh, we haven't paid it yet. She's still in jail. Yeah, but he's asking. Oh, they won't let you pay it. That's right. Because of the fingerprint oh, issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's asking for fifty percent more, so he'll get the money back, and then she's got to pay him twenty two fifty on top of that. Well, I just wanted the the forty five hundred plus the twenty two fifty, and then she can keep the other forty five hundred whenever she goes to court. That's fine with me. I'm not trying to make ten grand off of it like the bail the bonds companies do. I don't think your math's right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I put up forty five hundred, right, and then she gives a, what another twenty two fifty. So in full, she'd pay me sixty seven fifty, right? But when she goes to court, she gets her forty five hundred back. You know what I'm saying? Your forty five hundred back. Your forty five hundred back. Well, she's gonna pay me the forty five hundred before she goes back to court. Right. So she has zero, oh. and you have forty five hundred, but yet she still owes you twenty two fifty. Exactly. Yeah. So she pay that, but once she goes to court, she gets her forty five hundred back. Is that illegal? No, no, no. Hold on. Let's figure this math out first. Manny. Oh God, I hope not. I've done it a couple of times. <laughs> this math isn't right. What am I missing? All right. So it's 4500 for the bond. Then he's charging her 2250 in interest. So that's 50% as far as that goes. So by spotting her 4500 he's walking away with 6750 So it's a good day's work if you can get it. 
But a bonding company would only charge her ten percent. But that's besides. Yeah, but she would never see that forty five hundred again, though, that she gets from the. But he he thinks there's an extra forty five hundred dollars in. That she's not putting up the forty five hundred. The bonding company is. She would just never see the ten percent, approximately five hundred bucks, against the forty five hundred again. Oh, so you don't have to pay the full amount to the bonding company? No. What's the point of that? The bonding company is. They charge you 10% to cover the rest. That's why if it's a hundred thousand dollar bond, you you pay anywhere from 10 to 12, 13 thousand dollars and they front the rest. That's why they come chase you down if you don't come back to court. If you had the money to pay it all yourself, why wouldn't you just pay it? Because then it doesn't cost you anything. Well, I thought then you had you would just pay monthly to the bail bondsman until your forty five hundred was repaid. No, no, no. You just have to give them their their fee up front, which is 10 to 12 percent in this case. Oh, so then you don't have to pay anything else. Yeah, you don't have to pay anything else. You just lose that fee. That's what they're doing. They're saying, we will loan you this in exchange for a fee of this. If you don't show up, you owe us all of it. And we'll hunt your ass down. But if you come to court, great. Oh, damn. Well, I guess I screwed some people over then. <laughs> yeah, bad. Yeah, you can you tell your friend that I'll give her the money for 40% interest? <laughs> yeah, see, I thought when you went through a bail bondsman, you still had to pay the full amount. Like You just had to pay 10% to get out of jail. And then they would post it, and then you just had to pay them back. It hurts my head. No, no, you that... may have to give them some collateral in case they think you're going to flee, but you never pay them the whole amount. That's the whole point of a bail bondsman. <laughs> yeah, I thought nobody were... could ever post a hundred thousand dollar bond, or what person can actually post five to ten thousand for that matter in, in, in most households? This, this is how mass stupid Brandon is, Manny. He's going to get arrested. <laughs> He's going to get a, a bond for five thousand dollars. He's going to. Somebody's going to loan him $5,000. He's going to pay 50% interest. Somehow he's going to get out of it and, and be in debt for $45,000. <laughs> Sounds like a credit card company. Yeah, but so I, so I shouldn't have put up my own money for bond then? No. But when I went to jail. If you're fine to do it, you'll get it all back once the case is over. It's just how much are you going to make the girl pay in interest? Okay, well, now maybe she should go through a bond company then. But she don't know that. She's in jail. She ain't listening to this. <laughs> right. And so the 4500 she doesn't have to give it to you. You're just getting it all back once the case is over. So if she doesn't have it to pay you, it doesn't matter. You can give her an IOU, and then she can just pay you for the next seven years like a credit card would. Which, by the way, way dick move. I mean, she's your buddy who lives in your backyard, Woodshed Ted's sister. She's a girl you used to hook up with. She's part of your crew, your circle. She gets busted for a DUI. She needs help. You come to the rescue and then bust out. I'm going to charge you an extra 50% interest on top of your bond. What a dick move. No, Manny, yeah. That's like the dickest of dick moves. Have you not heard of a dicker move in the criminal uh, world? It's capital society, man. If you can't squeeze the people to take advantage of when they're down, then what are you going to do, right? We're just trying to go, teach you Brandon. That, that's America, baby. <laughs> wow. That's America, baby. That's America. <laughs> wow. Look, I'm very much pro capitalism, but dude, I would not do this to a friend. I would charge way more interest to you. Well, we can't get a bondsman, so what are we going to do? Uh, just give her the, the bondsman. Money. Okay, that's what I'm doing. And now you call me a bad person. I'm just trying to make a little. Little money off this situation. A little scratch on the side. <laughs> you know, you should have made her your sex slave for the next three years or something. I think that's even more illegal. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, more. you're so you're so good at it. Why not just keep the streak alive? <laughs> you know, you could you can R. Kelly the situation down in Coweta County, Georgia. <laughs> oh man, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll drop it down to forty five now. I'll say she's still in jail at the time of this recording, so. Let's, uh, let's get some questions for Manny. Uh, again, anytime uh, Manny's on, uh, I, I'll get this, you know, I'll grab a couple of them. Uh, in the newsletter, there's a section where it directly emails me, listen to the Bailey show at gmail.com. Also, um, you know, you can always reach out on social media and, and so on and so forth. Just anyway, the Bailey show.com. Uh, send me your questions for the mad dog, Manny Aurora, and then I'll pick out a few and then I'll ask him when he's on. Uh, this is Tim in Orlando. Hey, Manny, I got in trouble. At, damn it, Chuck, would you would you mute your computer? Uh, hey, Manny, uh, Tim in Orlando. Hey, Manny, I got in trouble at my kid's camp the other day. One of the other parents and I are friends. It was literally just two dads being stupid. He, from a distance, shot me the bird. So in return, I did a masturbating motion with my hand. 
and some kid camp counselor saw it and told the cops on me. The cop is trying to press charges and blame me uh, or ban me from picking up my kid. Can this happen? And what can happen? Uh, the cop can't ban you for picking up the kid unless they actually get you arrested for some type of indecency. And then the judge can order that you not go there to pick up. But I think people just need to have a sense of humor as far as that goes. Uh, could we find out how young the kids were that we were doing this to? Did the kids actually see it? Or was it just some, you know, brown nosing camp counselor type young guy that thinks they're in charge? I was under the impression they're probably young kids, you know, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, well, they've done much worse at that point. I mean, let's be realistic. I mean, this is the problem, right, Jason? Let the kids toughen up a little bit. I don't think a gesture moving up and down two or three times in fun should yield a, a, an arrest. Have you ever had to do that in a courtroom just to show evidence? A, my client did this motion with his hand. Judge, do you see this? Did you understand? That's the shake weight. But um, otherwise, if it's private property where they're picking up the kids, they can also... Um, the they can just administratively banish you, send you a letter saying, hey, you can't come on this property to pick up your kid. Um, if the cop doesn't do anything, they could do that too. That's Everybody's got super sensitive. You ever heard of uh, anything like this before? That was pretty good. I never thought that. Because, you know, like if Chuck were, you know, he was me and Chuck, you know, we're at the pick pickup line and I see him and, you know, we can't go to each other because we're waiting for our kids and we're at the car and he sees me and he's like, ah, bird to you, Bailey. You know, and I go, oh, jerky, jerky to you. You know, like that. I could... That, that probably happens on a daily basis between two two dads. You know what I mean? And then you get some counselor comes over, and goes, sir. You you can't do this motion with your hand in front of the kids. I, I would actually be embarrassed, Manny. I think I'd be really embarrassed. Well, then don't go to any little league baseball games. When my kids were little, going there, people did a hell of a lot worse, and you know nobody got arrested. So you're trying to tell me kids at your your kid or parents at your little league uh, games were doing uh, shake weight motions with their hands? I don't know if it was shake weight motions, but it's more like yelling and getting in people's faces, which is almost even more embarrassing and frankly threatening compared to doing the, or, you know, whatever, or even the lip thing with your tongue in the side. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're eyeballing a kid and you got a trench coat on and you're doing it, then yes, I can understand that could be a problem. But if you're just doing it to another dad, I mean, come on. Oh, okay. All right. Well, there you go, Tim. Uh, Sarah in Atlanta. Hey, Manny, my job fired me and didn't give me a reason. I've worked at this place for five years and never had any issues. Uh, I was a full-time employee. The person that fired me does so many illegal things, and I think because they know I know and don't agree with the stuff, they fired me. That makes sense? Yeah. Can they do this? Yeah, I mean, if it's a private company, we're an at-will state. So unless you have some kind of employment contract, they can fire you for the color of your T-shirt, the way you wear your hair. They can do anything as long as it's not race, sex, you know, gender, those types of things. Um, yeah, in our state, you can fire anybody for any reason at any time um, that you want to. Now, again, if they did it for one of the protected categories, as I mentioned, then you have a lawsuit, potentially. If it's government, then it's a little different versus uh, a private company. Yeah, you're screwed. The, the The worst thing you could possibly be today is straight and white in the workforce. You've got like zero footage, footing, not footage, footed, footing. I mean, like I've seen, you know, uh, this one lesbian girl, horrible, talentless, whiny, nobody likes her, trying to fire her all the time. They still do it, just talk shit. Not very good at what she does and untouchable absolutely untouchable you know um it's crazy it, and, and those, they say that out loud you know they, they like management you know if you have a relationship with them like i did they would say that like i can't do anything she's she's a lesbian I'm like, it's, it's a diversity hire right it's it's a diversity hire i mean it, it's crazy but the way people define like it's funny how white people define diversity white people define diversity is non-white and that's so not the definition of diversity. There's an event that I used to be a part of that got a new sponsor. And that sponsor was not thrilled with the lack of, or yeah, wasn't thrilled with the lack of diversity during this event, especially with the MC, because the MC was a straight white guy. So uh, that person was asked to step aside so someone of color could do that to appease this client and they would then showcase their diversity by in my opinion 
humiliating a huge list of young black kids, you know, at the event. And they just screamed diversity. And I was like, that's not what diversity is. Why are you poisoning these poor kids' brains by screaming that's what diversity is? Diversity is all different colors, everybody. And there should be diversity. That's everybody getting along of sex and race and color, religion, and so on and so forth. Not just one, you know, but it's funny. The white person's definition of diversity is just so off the mark. Absolutely so off the mark. It's very, very funny. Uh, Frank in Daytona Beach. Manny, the mad dog. I got pulled over the other night and charged with possession of marijuana. The weed was in my trunk in a bag with, like, my jumper cables and stuff. Honestly, I totally forgot. I put it there. Here's the thing. The cop said that he wouldn't have charged me but claims because I was hiding it, uh, and that made things worse. Is that a thing, like, where they find the drugs versus, versus it being in plain sight? Oh, that's interesting. He's, he's saying the cop said he was in trouble because he knew he was hiding them from him. Well, that sounds borderline retarded. Um, <laughs> I mean, what are you supposed to do? Keep your drugs out on the the front passenger seat as far as that goes. But the bigger question is, what did he get pulled over for? And second, what caused the cop to search his car? He's got to have probable cause to search the car. Um, there's no way in hell he could have smelled that weed. He may say in the police report that he smelled weed, so he started tearing the car apart. Um, so there are a lot of issues in this guy's case that need to be looked at. And hopefully he can just get the entire stop thrown out and the case is over because if the weed was just a little amount, not like six pounds of it back there, and it was just in a baggie inside another bag in the trunk, yeah, there's no way anybody could smell any of that stuff. Um, and so we have to determine what the reason was for being, pulling him over. And number two, aside from just getting a ticket, what caused the cop to have the authority to search the car? Uh, honesty is the best policy. You know, throw your hands up. Sorry, officer. I got the weed in here. Probably let you off the hook. Right? No? I mean, I, I I I just I can't imagine anybody saying that, you know, as far as that goes, because nobody's gonna let you off the hook. Oh, this time I'll I'll just let you keep the weed, go do it or but why did they stop him and why did they get to search the car? Those are the things I want to know. Uh -huh. I, I I gave a cop weed twice. That first time was a corrupt cop in Luthersville. And the second time, I uh, ran a red light, and we had three people in there. And uh, my buddy had one. He ate his. Uh, the, his girlfriend was in there, had like a 3.5, shoved it up her vagina. And then I just had to give the cop mine. I didn't have time to give it away. I pretended like I didn't see the cop because it was midday, and I just started going through the Wendy's drive through <laughs> And then some dude was like, hey, man, you're getting pulled over. I'm like, what? Really? Am I? And you got off the hook because you gave your weed to the cops. And, hey, look, you got me. I'm busted. Here, you take it, right? Yeah, and I bought us some time, too, so we got rid of the other stuff. But, uh, yeah, okay. just got a red light ticket. Manny? That's called white privilege, right? I'm glad you didn't do yeah. that. <laughs> Not white, don't shoot do me. That. I'm white, don't shoot me. <laughs> he pro actually, you probably would have rather have had the, the marijuana out of your friend's uh, girlfriend's vagina. Yeah. yeah, we went back and smoked it afterwards. <laughs> it was in a bag. It was in a bag. We're good. I <laughs> hope so. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Sweaty vagina marijuana <laughs> had you guys hooked up prior to that or was it clean at least God. i think it was clean i just picked them up 30 minutes ago they and looked like they were sweaty no man he was bringing them back from the hospital she just gave birth oh god <laughs> then there was a kilo in there at that point after birth <laughs> oh, chuck god. knows what i'm talking about probably two or three kilos <laughs> <laughs> and a scale <laughs> intent to distribute <laughs> <laughs> all right uh there you go those are the questions um you want to stick around uh manny for one question with brandon and then, then we'll wrap things up sure uh, all right well, let me get you the little thing you're doing one question with brandon let's go hi right, brandon what's your one question all right, someone told me this the other day. I can't remember who it was, but uh, is it possible to die with spending all your money but not dying broke? Is it possible to die spending all your money but not die broke? Yeah, I know who told you that, you dumbass. You took my question. I, I called him up out of the blue, and I said, dude, I just thought of this. And I, it was like in a random place, 
then I was like, I got a one question for it. Not that I wanted you to be lazy and use mine. We could have done both, but it is a very good question, right? Can you, is it possible to, what is it? Die spending all of your money, but not die broke. That was the question. Yeah. Like you just spend your last $10 on like two cheeseburgers at McDonald's and you die. Like, can you time it right? Yeah. Manning. I'm not understanding the question, so maybe I'm a little dumber than I think I am. So here, let me explain it to you. So if, you know, you hear people all the time when it comes to money, you know, like say your wife wants to buy something expensive and you're like, look, it's not right now. We, we're just, it's not in the budget. We've got this to pay for, this to pay for. And then she comes back and says, you can't take it to the grave, Manny. You just can't take it to the grave. You got to spend it while you're alive, right? You've probably heard that before. Sure. So, so the question is, is it possible to die broke so die without being broke. Yeah, die without money. being broke. What was it? To die without... Say it again. <laughs> is it possible to die... Uh, is it possible to spend all your money before you die without being broke? Without being broke, yes. That's it. Well, I mean, if you live paycheck to paycheck and you spend all your money for the month and you die, your next week's salary is going to come in, so I guess your bills could be paid. Otherwise, you have life insurance, so you're not broke, you know, for your family. You probably own something, so you're not broke as far as whether it's a car, a house, condo, something. Is that what you mean, or is this some kind of like Dr. Seuss riddle that I don't quite understand? You no, know? it's it's a, it's another angle I'd ever thought of. It's kind of like Brewster's Million, when you're supposed to spend the $30 million, and he shows up last minute, and they're like, oh, no, you still have $10,000 deposit. So what Manny's saying is you'll always have money. So most people will, not everybody, but you'll always have some sort of money. So technically you can't die broke. Chuck? I mean, once you die, it, Chuck, that... can I interrupt you? Yeah, go ahead. Why do I care? I'm dead. What difference does it make? <laughs> it's like one last game. Can I time it out right? Yeah, it's it's a matter of timing it out. And, and it's the, the whole reason I said this to Brandon, and I forget there was something that happened. It was a conversation that I overheard. And God, I just happened the other day too, and I forgot what they were talking about. But it was something to do with, you know, like spending money. You can't take money to the grave, and and I hear that all the time because I'm very frugal with my money. And my wife, you know, she is horrible. I mean, she might be the dumbest person when it comes to money. I've never met someone so <laughs> bad at money. And so I'm the smart one, you know. Um, but I get accused of not living life to its fullest. Like you're not going to go broke, Jason. You're fine. This is that go and do this Buy that Buy you know, buy the jack. Like I was up at Al university, of Alabama. I got this t-shirt, right? When we were taking my daughter up for, for orientation, there was a sweatshirt. I wanted the sweatshirt was $90. I chose not to buy the sweatshirt. I was like, you know, I just, do I need it or do I want it? And I knew that she wanted to buy a lot of stuff. So I was like, I didn't buy it. Could I afford it? The whole scheme of things? Yes. But was it in the budget for me at that time? No. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what I'm talking about. Does that make more sense? Yeah, but I'm hoping they're paying you better so you can afford $90 sweatshirts. But, you know, should I up my sponsorship? I was going to say yes. <laughs> and who is they? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chuck, do you want to answer that question? I'm, I'm just going to say, man, I, I don't think it's possible for anyone to die broke. I don't think there what you, you do. I don't think how you try. I don't, I don't, I don't think how hard you even try. You can't die broke at the end of the day, when you leave this world, anybody, and that's going for the person with the least amount of belongings. There's something that you're leaving behind, whether that's that stupid star Wars, Darth Vader that Jason has behind him or, you know, a shoebox full of baseball cards or whatever. I mean, there's always going to be something that was left of value after you leave. It could be the shoes you're wearing. You have one outfit. It, it's worth something. I mean, when you they die, there's be, always going to be. So you might as well do they know, live be, life. Do, do they all have to be tangible items? So like it would, would something of value, like the, 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 something that you've passed down, like in your case, Chuck, like telling people how smart it is to do video with the window behind you. Would that be of value? <laughs> so it, it, it's impossible to die broke. No, <laughs> no, that's you're knowledge. taking you're taking the old adage. No, I, I mean some, I'm keeping it simple. Tangible items only. You're always going to have something of value. Um, now, granted, you know, oh, I could never die broke because of all the you know experiences I've had. No, I mean that's whatever, and that's just a cop out. But I think that we all, none of us can die broke. So no matter how much money you spend, you're just trying to be 
not only secure for yourself, like what you're doing, I do the same thing. Dude, I went to Dick's today. I could have bought a freaking jersey for this baseball game. I almost did it, but they're $129. In the grand scheme of things, could I afford it? Yeah, but do I really need a $129 Gunnar Henderson jersey? No, at the end, I don't for 129 bucks. So, I, I but no, I don't think anybody can die broke. So spend your money, man. Enjoy. You were, you were just happy to get Dick's that day. Yes, I was I was happy to be at a place called Dick's. As, as you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan, huge fan. You roll up with that Chrysler Pacifica and you are popular. I can get a lot of dicks in there. A lot of dicks. <laughs> a, lot of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of dicks in the CP. <laughs> well, what are you rolling in a Chrysler? Oh, you like the big dicks. Oh, I love them, man. Give me those. Yeah. All kinds of them. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> Never going to let me live that down. Brandon, do we answer my question? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think when I when we brought it up, I asked, "Is like, are you really a millionaire? You have a million dollars, but you only spend a quarter million of it. Were you really a millionaire? Because you didn't spend a million dollars. Kind of like the same thing. Well, that that I told you, I was like, there's different ways to answer that question. Because, you know, like when you hit that million dollar mark, right? A lot of times it's, it's not going to be a million dollars liquid. It's going to be a million dollars assets. So, you know, unless you're a multimillionaire, I don't think you can be a millionaire. How about yeah, that? Yeah, that's that's why the, the rule is if you ever win Powerball and you have 300 and something million dollars, you have to give your friends more than a million. You got to go like two or three million because as soon as you give it to them, if it's a million bucks, they're no longer a millionaire. There you go. So you got to give them multi millions. I agree. And yeah. taxes and everything else. I mean, you don't want to be hanging out with non millionaires. So <laughs> you got to give them like two million, three million, maybe. Absolutely. Man, Manny, you, I mean, you can speak from experience, right? The millions that you just throw around left and right. Yes, apparently I'm going to get a lot of money from this girl, but now, unfortunately, Brandon's <laughs> taking it all. So, so much for my legal fee. It sounds like pro bono in Coweta County. So, so let me let me ask this back to you, man. Should I lower my fee for the podcast because of the situation and, and the sweatshirt situation? <laughs> I think the fee for your podcast is pretty reasonable for what you're putting out there. I'm happy with it, and that's why I associate with it, because it's a good product. So I'm hoping more people join up. And compared to what I everybody else is charging this is a bargain yeah see thank you very much he just went totally rogue to do a promo for how great it is to sponsor this podcast on a free bay episode nonetheless and i appreciate that that's why you should also subscribe uh the bailey show.com right all right uh give us a like share follow on social media uh that's all on the bailey show.com go to the aurora law firm.com for manny aurora's services if you need him distinctgrace.com podcast and pours three uh, those tickets are available on Distinct Grace's website. And Brandon's Clueless 2 is out there. You just have to find it whenever he decides to do a podcast, and you can watch him try to blow things up and be a follower of his on social media. All right, uh, Brandon, you got anything before we get out? Uh, Brandon's bonding service. We don't really know how the law works, but we got you the money. <laughs> and Chuck. Yeah, if you guys shop at Dick's, just so you know, it's not what you think it is. So don't waste your time. Uh, Manny Aurora, the Mad Dog, do you have anything before we get out on a Freebay episode? No, I appreciate everybody sending in the questions. The more, the merrier. And I'll see you guys another week or two. There you go. Talk to y'all soon. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for listening. Till next time, check out thebaileyshow.com. Make sure you like, share, follow on all socials. I leave you with these parting words. Never got a pink slip either. You know what I would get? A guy would come around to my desk and say, Get the fuck out of here! What do we want to talk about? Subscribe at thebaileyshow.com. Yeah, baby! Oh.